My sister turned crazy. Her obsessive behavior matched with my mother just not seeing what she was up to created a family disaster. And I want to tell you all about it. My sister went crazy, and her obsessive behavior and my mother's obsession destroyed our peace. I'm the oldest daughter of the family, and as expected, it seemed that I was desperately loved by my family. Our little family consisted of my twin sister, Anna, who was simply my carbon copy, and my beautiful mother, who divorced our dad recently. My sister was short blonde hair, beautiful hazel eyes, and a cute baby smile. Professionally, she wears trousers and dress shirts, or sometimes pencil skirts with tops. Always wears slight makeup in the office, but at home remains casual in her PJs and hairband. There was no apparent reason for the divorce, but I felt that their relationship since after divorce has been improving. Luckily, the two of us are now having two homes to visit. We choose our mother's side and often visit our father, who just lived in a small cozy flat near the town. Things between us remained pretty good until I introduced Re to my family. Re is a handsome man with striking facial features and well-built physique. Professionally wears golden frame glasses, which gives me more allure to his stubble and jawline. Black hairs are always combined and gelled properly. Mostly dressed up in a safari suit, I thought that things will be fine with us, but who knows how my sister's past will make her feel. But one thing is for sure, there was always something propelling going on against me, and it was none of other than my mother and my twin sister. There were days that I felt their hatred towards me as I was the closest to my father, and recently his lawyers revealed the will on us. As for the last wish of my father, his legacy was conventionally distributed among three parties. I was awarded the inheritance of 30%, 50% to my sister, and 30% to charity trust. I totally understood my father's concerns as Anna's future was at stake, and at the very moment I was a bit scared that how this girl's going to spend the other 50%. Anna was a free woman who runs from commitments, and evenly from responsibilities. It was a Sunday evening, and the three of us were sitting in the living room, my father stood and placed a folder in front of us. Some documents say his will. It was too early to reveal the will, but my father comforted my opinion that he wanted to pass on his inheritance as soon as possible. He was a Catholic, and for a long time, he wished to serve the church. The last veil was to pass on inheritance to his children. The two of us went under the conditions I was given by the attorney, which was a perfect amount and wise decision to be made. As per the conditions, the attorney should be responsible and my father clarified to us why he was choosing me over Anna. Despite the logical facts and configurations, there was a disparity leaning on the table. Anna went so furious that she wanted to kill me, as I was the most privileged one, despite the fact I was receiving less, and my father reciprocated by making me the attorney of the whole inheritance. It means that Anna will always be needing my approval if she wants to do something with the money. She took that file and silently went off, but her aggression gleamed in her eyes. It was the first surprise that my father gave, and I was there to let him meet Ree. My only one. As soon as Anna walked out of the room, Re stepped in. The three of us had dinner together as I knew my father was leaving early, so we had to place the engagement party on the upcoming weekend. So I packed myself up for the weekend and the two of us decided to make our engagement a surprise to our families. We decided on the place and every single thing, and despite our hectic schedules, the two of us were making time. I met Ree the time we studied at Harvard, but we merely had a conversation. After years of graduation, when I started my job, I met him there again. Conventionally, he joined me the day after my selection. There was something between us, a spark if you say, and it soon dragged the two of us into a relationship. After two years of a relationship, we decided to go for marriage. Re wanted to keep everything hidden from our family, but I insisted, as my father was the most important figure to me, and it was just unfair to him that he would be kept far away from all that mattered. 
It was the engagement day, and we called every single member of our families at a casual dinner. The night seemed perfect, until my sister walked in, and I felt there was discomfort with Ree's speech. It seemed that his throat was just choking, therefore his words were shaking, and all of a sudden, Ree left the hall without saying a word right after he made an announcement that the two of us are together. I followed him there and found him beside the bar. For the first time, I just felt that he was zoning out. I stood closer to him and patted his shoulder. His face was showing it all that there's an untold story. Ree took a deep breath and asked if he is fine. The two of us went back and hosted the engagement party and we got on the board. Anna left aggressively and everyone over there just made a notice. Ree was not feeling well, or normal at the night, and it seemed that something was still bothering him and I didn't know what it was. I considered it my irrational thought and feelings and focused on the Ree words rather than his behavior. Once again, something was going on with her and what can I expect from an irresponsible brat who aimed to party all night long? The night went well and Re asked me, saying he has an important matter to discuss. Although he was drunk and it seemed that he was not having a good time, the only thing he was just murmuring was Anna's name and how he knew her. But I did not take notice that this might be a coincidence. I agreed to listen to him in the morning. That night, I went home. I was a bit late and it seemed that my sister and mother were having an important discussion to make. I stood closer to the living room and all I heard were Anna's words about me. That first, I've stolen the inheritance by showing manipulation and responsible figure towards father, and now Re. What? Re? So I stepped in. She yelled at me, saying that I am the one manipulating Re to marry. I know it was all rubbish, but her last statement just made me mad when she expressed her love towards my fiancé. I shut her words down with that statement that Re's getting married to me soon. And I might just give up her rights to the inheritance. And I was broken, left with no other words. Therefore, I left and went into my room. I cried the whole night as my heart was in agony and I was dealing with immense emotional conflicts. I didn't know what to do. There was the lack of affection and care from my mother's side as she always stood for Anna and abandoned me. Re wasn't just the love of my life, rather, he was the only happiness and peace left in my life. I'd be devastated without him, and the worst part is, my mother knew about my feelings and wished rather she chose to ignore them and take sides with Anna. The next morning, there was an anonymous text on my phone. The sender was not saved on my phone, I opened it with my eyes glued. The text says to keep an eye on Anna and my fiancé, Re. It was just rubbish, so I placed the call on that number. As expected, no answer. At the same time, I received a call from Marie, and there was some trouble in his voice. He requested I meet him at the cafe, and that was just around the corner. It was urgent, and he mentioned, so I packed myself up and went without breakfast. I rushed towards the cafe. Marie was already there waiting. This morning, his behavior was quite awkward and resilient. He requested me not to panic while crushing and crossing his fingers. I comforted him that I am there for him. But Re began saying that he was in a relation with my Anna. It was just a tender date, and the whole thing extends back to the times when he was jobless. The times that I've not met him. He says how he doesn't know Anna was my sister. I was sitting there and just thinking about what to say and how to respond to him. Re took my hand and comforted me that he does not want any part of his past to come in between their relationship as it was just a hangout. I didn't want to hear any more of the details, so I left without saying a word. I went home and his words were just mingling in my mind. I flopped myself down on the sofa and there was rebellious thoughts that were just pounding in my mind. The two of us have always decided that we won't discuss our past as it's already gone. But who knew that Ree's ex would be my sister? As I was thinking about her, she walked down to the living room and sat next to me. I knew there must be something going on in her little mind. I was really mad at her that she did not even share about him with me. I kept my mouth shut and here Anna began. 
Despite telling me about her relationship, she warned me not to marry him, and I was totally astounded. I asked her, is there any place for them to be in their relationship? Anna said with her decision that they're simply not the right match, and I can find another man too. I was shocked that what exactly that girl was saying to me. In the meanwhile, here comes my mother and she asked Anna to go to her room. I was expecting that she might have a piece of the solution to fix the whole thing, but my mother just heard the whole story and she comforted me by patting my shoulders. But then there was a statement that made me aggressive and broken at the same time. My mother said the whole thing to my face that Anna should be the one to get married to Re. She was convincing me to give up on Re, as Anna's the little sister and she deserves to marry a very rich man. How the hell are those arguments anyways? I literally screamed over there. I confronted my mother with a series of arguments that Anna and Re might have a past, but I'm the present. In her opinion, there was a suggestion placed by my mother that I am the meanest one in the family who only cares for herself and left her family unattended. I was just about to say a word to her, but the situation over there turned out extremely intense. Here comes my mother just yelling at me that I do not deserve Re, and she won't approve of our marriage. I don't know why my mother has always favored Anna, despite the fact she's more spoiled and in fact she's the privileged one. I was completely astounded by the fact. Well, in the middle of the argument, we heard a sharp noise of slamming the door. It must be Anna, and she was up to something. We rushed to her room and she locked herself up and was not answering. My mother was getting pretty worried, and the two of us were just pounding against the door, calling her name, but there was no answer. Although we were twin sisters, Anna was my mother's favorite, and there was nothing to prioritize except Anna. Considering the situation, I rushed down and tried to open the door with the spare keys, and what we saw completely shattered us. Anna was laying unconscious on the bed. The ambulance was called, and she was given immediate care. Down there, I and my mother were praying for health, and I was considering the fact that this was just placed by my mother that I should give up on Re, and my sister needs him more. He's rich, stable, and he's responsible. On the other side, there was my mother who just considered me the only one behind Anna's condition. I was in the middle of chaos, and every single event was cultivating more confusion in my head. There was nothing to consolidate as I needed some time to get along with the situation. On one side, my mother and sister were making the best effort to ruin my life, and on the other flip of the coin, there was Re, the love of my life. Considering the situation, I went to Re and split the beans. Re was a great listener, and he welcomed every single insecurity that I had. We talked for hours and the only solution that we just made was to get married as soon as possible. I wasn't calm, and Re was there to reassure me that he wants to start a family with me, not with Anna. And it was just clueless to drag things up just on the silly hooks, but that won't last more than a week, I'm hoping. It was just sort of a physical attraction. Re mentioned, and I knew my sister quite well. The two of us decided that we will get married at the earliest day. After two days, Anna was shifted homes and she was doing really great. Rhea and I decided to marry secretly, and we'll announce it once we make her move to our new home in Mexico City. Since the day she turned back home, there was no discussion about me and Rhea. Only one day, my mother showed up, and she was again negotiating and, in fact, convincing me to give Rhea to my little sister. It was an awful situation. I stood in silence and did not utter a word. The sun was down, and apparently, this was the last day in my house. I wanted to enjoy a happy dinner and some last memories at the place where two sisters were born, not the two enemies. The whole situation just turned Anna into a miserable enemy, and all she wanted to do was be with Ree. Things were getting so intense at home that I could not even breathe, but luckily, this was the last night here. I went for a little walk, and as I returned back home, I heard a discussion that was literally a huge red flag. I heard that my sister was talking insanely about Ree and how obsessed she is with him. In addition, 
My mother just told her that there's a possibility that they might get married. And my obsessed sister just answered that she'll be doing every single thing to prevent that marriage. It was the right time to announce that Rhi and I, <laughs> we are getting married. As I just announced the big news, there was a fragile situation for my sister. I knew exactly what I've done. The next day, I packed myself up and the two of us were on board to marry. The ceremony went well and the two of us were now together. I handed over a legal piece of paper to my sister, and before getting married, I heard their long conversation, saying that if I will be getting married, then my sister will replace me. They tried to replace me with Anna, so that Anna could get her obsession and destroy my whole life. What a shame, she murmured, and I threw that document on their face and said Anna's now abandoned, and her inheritance will be passed to charity. <laughs> Also, I filed the legal case of them for being planning of abductions. They tried to kidnap me and planned horrifying stuff against me. I did what I have to do, and that's why they deserved it. Sorry for this, as my native tongue is not English. Okay guys, I want to know from you. Was Carla the mother of the story, or was Anna the sister of the story, the worst person in all? I would like to know your thoughts on that. You can only pick one, so drop it down in the comment section who you think was the true villain. And we'll turn our attention to the final story of the day. It's an Am I the A-Hole, and it is Am I the A-Hole for returning my daughter's birthday cake after I discovered that my wife made changes to it. I'm 37 and male. I have a daughter who's now 13, Olivia, from my former relationship. Currently, I'm married to my wife who has a daughter who's 16 named Brittany. So, Brittany is the opposite of Olivia. For example, Brittany's a social child, Olivia's an introvert. The list is long, but they're just complete polar opposites. Olivia's 13th birthday was two days ago. She loves chocolate, and I decided this is the flavor I was going to go with when I contacted the bakery. However, my wife objected since Brittany absolutely hates chocolate and suggested we go vanilla. I said no, no way, because for one, Olivia hates vanilla and it's her birthday. So, she gets to have her cake with her favorite flavor. My wife got upset and took it as a, I have no regard for Brittany, and that we should just choose another neutral flavor instead. <laughs> I shut that down and said no more discussing this because I'd already decided to go with Olivia wanted. At the day at the birthday, I was supposed to get the cake, but I was surprised to see my wife coming home after picking up the cake from the bakery. I looked at it and discovered that it was not a chocolate cake, but indeed a vanilla cake with a small piece of chocolate on top. I got pissed, thinking they got my order wrong and was about to contact them, but my wife said there was no mistake and that she called the bakery the day before and made, quote, slight changes to the cake and pleased both girls. I was stunned. I lost it on her and asked her why the hell she did that. She got defensive saying that birthdays are a no excuse to show favoritism and that her daughter is watching and observing and how I'm treating both children. I told her off since I was the one paying then called the bakery and explained what happened. I had the cake returned and replaced it with a chocolate cake, although this one's smaller, <laughs> but it's fine. My wife declined to take part in the celebration and later we got into a huge argument where she called me controlling and selfish for returning the cake instead of using this opportunity to teach Olivia to compromise so everyone's happy. Now, I'm teaching her to be, quote, selfish. I said that my daughter gets to act selfish on her birthday and that she, my wife, was teaching her daughter to be entitled. Word for word, and it led to a bigger argument. We're not talking as of now. So, am I the a-hole for returning the cake and not taking my wife's input into consideration? Here's a comment that a lot of people seem to think makes a lot of sense, so let's see what you guys think. Not the a-hole. It's Olivia's birthday, not Brittany's birthday. The cake should not be the flavor of what the birthday kid wants. This is a special day for Olivia. Therefore, doesn't really need to be fairness between your daughters. I don't like chocolate, but when it's my sister's birthday, we get chocolate because it's what she likes. I suck it up since it's her special day. 
your wife is an a-hole for going behind your back. The cake was basically vanilla to make Britney happy, with tiny bits of chocolate for the birthday girl. I have to agree, I don't think it was really fair for the wife to do that, but let me know your thoughts on it. Do you think that she had the opportunity to do this, or was it the right thing? Drop your comments, guys. If you're not subscribed to the channel, just know. Mr. Reddito has three channels to watch, all with daily content. So if you want to watch some more videos after this one ends, check out the description below and you can find my other two channels. Guys, I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one.